Hello, welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And on screen, we've got a puzzle by a new compiler to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, this puzzle is by Jesper Josefsson. And um, yeah, it's a combination of Thermo Sudoku and Sandwich Sudoku. And we've seen a couple of these on the channel before. I've always enjoyed them. But what impresses me at first sight about this puzzle is the scarcity of clues. There are no given digits four relatively short thermometers and just a sprinkling of sandwich clues around the outside. So clearly a lot of care and attention has gone into creating this. Um, and in fact, I know it's been on Logic Masters Germany for a little while and has an extremely high approval rating. So it should be a lot of fun. A um, couple of things to mention before we try it. Um, firstly, on uh, Patreon today, but free, not behind the paywall, we've got a pretty extraordinary video for you. Um, and this is Christoph Seliger's video showing how to construct from scratch a Thermo Sudoku. Now there are very, very few uh, videos to my knowledge anywhere, let alone on YouTube, uh, that talk about Sudoku construction. And I think there are none by um, setters of Christoph's renown. So it's definitely worth watching. I know we get the question so often, you know, how do you, how do these constructors go about creating these masterpieces you feature on the channel? Well, now you can, you can watch one of these brilliant constructors do just that. And in fact, the puzzle that Christoph makes in the video has also been on Logic Masters Germany for a while, and it's also trotting along at a huge, hugely high rating. So you can play that puzzle now, and you can see exactly how it was made. It's really, really interesting stuff. It's a long video, so I think it's only, only have a look at it if you really are, you know, into this sort of thing. But it's uh, it, it's gold dust for people like me. Um, what else? Well, Matt Gaffney, um, who makes these weekly crosswords that feature. Uh, alarmingly difficult metas uh, at the end of them. Uh, Mark has made a video uh, on Matt's puzzles and that's definitely worth watching as well, especially if you're interested in the crossword content. Um, that's also free on Patreon. Um, now what I might do as well, if I get time, I'm not sure whether this will be today, I had an email a week or so back from Thomas Snyder about gmpuzzles.com which has relaunched the start of last week. And he did recommend that uh, we might like to have a look at the Filomino that was published yesterday over there. So if I get a chance, I will record my solve of that and put that up for those of you who support the channel on Patreon. Um, what else? Well, we had an email from Twitch, believe it or not, asking us if we would begin live streaming on Twitch. Now, as you probably gathered, Mark and I are complete Luddites when it comes to technology. We have no clue. I mean, I've watched Twitch. I'd like to be able to do Twitch, but... I don't know how to do it. So um, firstly, would it be a good idea? Would any of you like to see us um, stream on Twitch uh, occasionally? Um, and any tips you might have, <laughs> if you do want to see it, that would be good. In particular, will it work on a very clunky old PC, which is um, what I have to use at the moment? Um, now, what else? Anything else? I don't think there's anything else. I think I should just tell you the rules of um, Jesper's puzzle. So what have we got? We've got some thermometer shapes in the grid. Well, these thermometer shapes, very simple. Each thermometer has a bulb. The bulb must contain the lowest digit. And then after that, you've got to continually increase until you get to the other end of the thermometer. Now, you don't have to go up in steps of one. So if this was a two, this doesn't have to be a three, it could be a four, you know, that could be a six, seven, eight, nine, that would be completely valid as a way of filling that thermometer. So that's how thermometers work. Outside the grid, we've got sandwich Sudoku clues. Um, now, which one shall I pick? I'll pick the 15 to demonstrate how these work. So the 15 is saying that sandwiched between the one and the nine in this row, so wherever we put the one and the nine, and they could be the nine and the one, let's do it that way around. Let's say the nine and the one went like that. I don't want to put the one there just because it annoys me. Let, let me. I don't like putting ones partially along a thermometer. Um, right, so let's put the nine and the one here and here. This 15 clue is saying those three cells have got to sum up to 15. Um, that's all there is to it. So you just find the one and the nine and the cell sandwich between them. You add them up and that's what you have to put in, the, in these edge clues. So you can see this is a... It's a very, very um, efficient construction here, and there is not a lot of superfluous information. 
and no given digits. So it should be a lot of fun. Our testers say it's a lot of fun and they say it's probably only moderate difficulty today. So if you do sometimes struggle with some of the monstrous puzzles that we, we, we tackle on the channel, this might be a good one to try. Um, click on the link under the video to play as always. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, and in terms of solving this, the first thing that strikes me is that none of these sandwich clues are in any way interesting. They're all too small or medium. You know, only the three has, you know, do we know anything definitive about? We know that a three clue must be a one cell sandwich clue because you can't put, you know, we can't do that and put a one and a two in the middle because although these two sum to three, we've repeated the one in the column. So we know that wherever the one and the nine go in this column, they're separated by one cell and that cell will be a three. But all the other sandwich clues are completely open-ended. We've not got anything in the 30s. We've not even got anything 22 or higher. When you get a 22 clue, you can always say that the central cell of the row and column is not a one or a nine, um, but we haven't got that here. So I'm gonna look at the, I'm gonna look at the thermometers. And the longest thermometer is that one. That looks like it's seven cells long. Right, so if this is seven cells long, this square's got to be one, two, or three, two, three, or four, three, four, or five. It's got to look like that. Um, and you can see that, you know, if we try and put a four here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, broken. You can't put a 10 in a Sudoku, at least not in this Sudoku. So that can only be a one, two, or a three which I'm not sure what we're meant to do with that. That's not telling us, at least it's not telling me very much. This one, on the other hand, is this one's six. So that's an extra degree of freedom we get from this one, which is not ideal, but let's put the options in. Um, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, Uh, I thought the 11 clue might be helpful, but I don't think it is because I was wondering whether we could force this square to be a 9 because if it's not a 9, where do we put the 1 and the 9 in this column? But the problem is we could put them in those two positions and make those two cells sum to 9. So that's not ideal. Uh, Ah, no, we can <laughs> we can do something very similar to what, the, what we did yesterday in Alice's video. So yesterday we looked at something where we had to be very careful about creating six, seven, eight, nine quadruples. Well, look at this. This square here, if this is a six, if that's a six, now I force these three squares to be greater than six, and that square to be greater than six. Well, there are only three digits, three valid digits, greater than six in a Sudoku, and I'd have to put those three digits into four different squares. So that is not six. Um, that's lovely. Now once, yeah, so now we get a restriction coming down this way. Once this can't be six, this can't be five, that can't be four, that can't be three. Ah, now look, we get the same trick up here. That's, this is very, very original use of the thermometers. Because now look, look at this. If I make this digit small, if in fact if I make it a two or a three, I break the, I break the column. Because if I make this a two or a three, this has to be a one or a two, and I'd have to put one, two, and three into four different cells in the same column. So this can't be a two or a three. So this can't be a three or a four. And we get a whole load of pairs down that way now. That one's still pretty open, but we actually have done a lot better. Oh, and we can, we can continue this. If that's a seven, that would have to be 
an 8, that would have to be a 9, and that would have no value. So that can't be a 7. So that... Oh, no. I was about to say that can't be an 8, but it can be an 8. Uh, oh, no, it can't. It can't be an 8. This one can't be an 8 either, because if that's an 8, that's a 9, and that still has no, no value. So... What a strange... That's so strange the way that that unwound, but it's lovely. It's comp you know it's original stuff, which is what I like. So now oh, we still don't get anywhere with the eleven clue. So what is it? The seven. Ah, yeah. Okay. So look, this square can't be a one or a nine because it's partially along a thermometer. Whenever you have a thermometer shape and you want to put a one on it, you can only put it in the bulb. You only put the 9 at the top end. My phone is buzzing at me. Um, so this can't be a 1 or a 9. So look at the row again. Where do the 1 and the 9 go? Well, we can't put them together. Because if we do, there aren't going to be cells summing to 7 between them. So this square's got to be a 1 or a 9. This is sandwich. Can't put a 3 and a 4 in the sandwich. So, so if this was the other 1 or 9, this can't be 3, 4. Can't be one six because there's a one in the edge of the sandwich. So can it be two five? No, no, it can't. Look, if this is a two five pair, this square has to be a three, that square has to be a four, and what does that square equal now? It can't be a four or a five. So this this is not a two cell sandwich, this is a one cell sandwich, which means that is a seven. That's an 8, therefore, because it can't be a 9, and it has to be higher than a 7. That's a 9. That's a 7. That, that's a 6. Is that... Yeah, we get the whole of the thermometer. Wow. And that, that must be an 8, then, to complete the row. And all of a sudden, as someone once said, we are cooking with gas. Um... One second while I just... Right, the 11 clue now can't go upwards because the, I, the minimum I could make those two cells add up to would be 13. So the, the 1 must be down... Oh, this is good. Because the 1 has to be down here somewhere, but it can't be there because that square would then have to be a 7 in order to make those two add up to 11, and it can't be. So the 1 is not there. The 1... And you can't have a four cell sandwich to add up to 11. So the one is in fact here. These two squares have got to add up to seven. Oh, which means they, yeah, they have to be, they have to be two and five because they can't be one, six or three, four. And that can't be a five. So we actually, we can write that in. one eight here where do we put the one and the eight in this box only there so that one must be a three to complete the box there's a three down in one of those three squares oh look the three up here now now we've got a one nine here so we know that wherever we put the other one nine the three must be in one of those two cells um now it can't be here anymore because of this three so it must be there. This has got to be a 1 or a 9. Should probably have shaded in all the cells that can't be 1s and 9s. I do like to do that, but I forgot at the start of this puzzle. I don't really want to start now. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Look, so not giving this clue... He's basically saying, ha ha, I'm not going to give you this number. <laughs> uh, sorry, just let me stare at this for a minute and see if I can spot something good. So maybe the 20 clue. Oh, in fact, yeah, of course, the 20 clue, because this is a 2. Right, so let's have a look down here. This is the 1, so we, we know the 9 can't go in this cell because then this clue would have had to be 0. So the 9 is somewhere down in the bottom of the grid. Now, it can't be there because that would give that only adds up to 2. It can't be here. Can't make these two add up to 20. Can it be here? 
Can we make those three squares add up to 20? Well, no, we can't, because once this is a two, those two squares would have to add up to 18, and we can't have three nines in this column. So in fact, the nine gets shunted all the way down to there, which is a little bit interesting here, but the nine can't go in those two cells, so it must be in one of those two positions in box nine and one of these three positions in their box three, therefore. Ah, now this one is important, I think, because of the seven clue. So where does the one go in row nine of the grid? Well, it can't come this way because of the one here. So it's got to come this way and it's got to be in one of those positions. Now, once we know that look, well, we know it's not here because there's already a one in this column, so it's not there. But this one in one of those two squares tells us that square is a nine. That's a one, that's a nine. There's a nine in one of these two cells because of Sudoku and a nine in one of those three cells. Um, okay. Now, what do we do next? Not quite sure. Um, oh, I tell you what we can do. We can say that's not a one. I can't make three cells add up to seven. Obviously, in normal killer Sudoku, you can have three cells adding to seven with one, two, and four. But in sandwich Sudoku, because the one has to form the boundary of the sandwich, you can't use the one again. So this can't be one, this is one. There's a one in one of those, oh, that's interesting. Look, there's a one up here in the nine clue where we can't have the one there because a nine clue, because we can't repeat the nine, has to be at least two cells. So, uh, oh, I can see I've got a two in one of those two positions by Sudoku. But this could still be a three cell sandwich. This could still be two, three, four, I think. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something there, but let's move on. Um, right. It's quite interesting, isn't it? How little information there is in this puzzle. So I've used this clue. I've not used this clue, but I know nothing about how to use this clue. I've used this one a bit, but this can still be three, four or two, five. Don't know how to use this clue. I've used this clue. I've used, I've used this one a bit, I suppose. Oh, now I can use this one more. Ah, this is, I should have spotted this before. Let's, um, let's revisit the 20 clue. And instead of focusing on the, the sum inside the sandwich, let's look at the sum outside the sandwich, particularly as it's on the thermometer. So we can do a bit of maths. Those squares have got to sum up to 45. That's what you get if you add up the whole of a column of a Sudoku because it will contain all the numbers from one to nine exactly once each. Now one and nine sum to 10. The sandwich sums to 20, we're told that. So those six cells sum to 30. So those three cells must sum to 15, i.e. 45 minus 30. Now, why is that interesting? Well, if these add to 15, how can that ever be a four? If that's a four, that has to be a five and now that has to be a six, and that makes that cell impossible. So this is not a four, this is a three. That puts a three down there. This square now, so these two squares have to sum to 12. So that's got to be an eight or a seven. Eight, seven pair in column or row three. Oh, ah, now. 
That is quite interesting all of a sudden to me. Why is it interesting? Well, look, the nine clue now up here. Oh, no, I can still put the two here and dodge it. I was thinking I was going to be able to... If this is a two, then, then we get a three cell sandwich, but I don't actually know that that's a two. Poppins. Um... Ah, no, the 15 clue, perhaps. Oh, that that is that is lovely, isn't it? This 7-8 pair with a gap in the middle of them is bizarrely powerful in this row. So the question to ask is, is, this, is it possible that this cell is not a 1 or a 9? Now, if this cell is not a 1 or a 9, how do we get 15 in this row? We can't put the 1s and 9s either side of the 7-8 pair because axiomatically, once I add in whatever I put in that square, it's going to add up to more than 15. So the only way of making 15 would be to try those two squares for the 1s and the 9s. But these two, therefore, would have to add to 15 in two cells without being 7, 8 and without being 6, 9 because you can't repeat the 9 in the row. So that's absolutely impossible. This square is a 1 or a 9. And this square can't be a 1 or a 9 because those two squares would have to add up to 15 then. And we've just shown it's not possible over that side. So it definitely ain't possible over that side either. That square is not a 9, therefore. The 1 or the 9 is over there. And it... Oh, hang on. Yeah, this, this is perfect, isn't it? So where is the 1 or the 9 in one of these cells? Well, it can't be here because we can't have a two-cell sandwich. It could be here. That would be okay. But if it's this far away, this clue is broken because you can't make a four-cell sum add up to 15 if... You've got a 7 or 8 in the total. Um, the, only, the only way would be 2, 3, 4, 6. That's the only way you could make 4 cells add up, to, add up to 15. So with a 7 or an 8 in the sum, it isn't possible. So this square has to be a 9 because it can't be a 1. Therefore, this is a 1. Oh, now look. Now that has to be a 1 by Sudoku because we've got 1s dotted around the grid there, there and there now what 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 do I get from that that's the question um, not sure feel like that's a big breakthrough but it's not actually threes over here are quite interesting locks a three into one of those cells that locks a three down here look that looks a three there ah the seven clue is better now that can't be that can't be three four can't be one six that's got to be two five so I've used this clue I've used this clue no, I've almost used that clue. So if this is... Actually, this is more restrictive than I thought. So these two squares have either got to add up to 7 or 8, depending on what that is. But in doing that, I can't use... I can't use 7 and I can't use 3. So this this actually is restricted. This if this is 8, these two add up to 7. They can't be 1 6, they can't be 3 4, so they've got to be 2 5. Which makes them the same as those. That by the way that's not a deadly pattern. Don't think you can then use uniqueness here to to say ah oh, this isn't possible. This is absolutely possible. And the reason is that this 
uh, sort of arrangement of digits is in four different three by three boxes. So the, the time that you'd have a uniqueness problem would be if you were looking at this situation and comparing these digits. I mean, the thing about a sandwich is it might be disambiguated by the sandwich totals anyway, but absolutely not. This is totally possible, uh, even in a classic Sudoku. Um, now, if on the other hand this was 7, these have to add to 8 without using 1, 7, without using 5, 3. So then they have to be 2, 6. So that these these are restricted. They always have a 2. Oh dear, I didn't mean to press that. They always have a 2 in them. Oh, and that means we've got an X-wing. That is a rare pattern in a sandwich. Look at that. So we've got, got 2s locked into one of these two squares in row three, two's locked into one of those two squares in row nine. So what does that mean? What restriction does that give us? Well, it allows us to write a two into the grid here. Now, oh, and that's gonna, that's gonna resolve this now. Oh, this is beautiful setting. This is just lovely. It's a just, ah, building an X-wing here to work over here is, is a sign of real class. Now, let me explain what's going on. We know the two must be in one of those two positions in row three. So there are exactly two positions that could exist in the final solution. We could have a two here. Now, if there is a two here, where would the two go in row nine of the grid? Well, we know because there are only two positions the nine could go into, it must go there. Now, if on the other hand, there was no two here in the finished grid, there would have to be a two there. And similarly, there would have to be a two there in row nine. So the key thing to realize about that arrangement, that sort of X arrangement, is that there was exactly one two in one of those two positions each in each of the situations. And there was exactly one two in those two positions in both of those finished arrangements. Therefore, there can never be twos in any of those cells. Now, why does that matter? Well, look, we pencil marked a two into box four. That can't be a two. This is a two. Now we come back to what I was looking at earlier, which is whether or not this this clue can be a two cell sandwich clue. Well, it can't because with seven cannot go here. So this has to be a three cell sandwich clue and it has to be two, three and four, which places a three in the grid by Sudoku places a four in one of those two positions and uh, surely it's going to give us more than this nine here we can resolve the nine over there not use that thermometer yet that's got to have by Sudoku that's got to have a six and a seven on it and we know the seven can't go in the bulb therefore because the six is a lower number Oh, now, oh, yeah, there you go. Where does the six go in row three? We've got sixes pencil marked on the thermo, six here. So those two can't be six. And the only place six can go is in the sandwich, which means this is a two six pair and must accompany a seven. That's an eight now. This is a two six pair, so that's not got a five in it. Oh, these had to add up to 15, didn't they? So that's now got to be a five. That makes that a six, that a seven. We've now done this top thermo. The six fixes the two, that fixes the six, that fixes the two, that fixes the five. Um, three, four, that must be a seven by Sudoku. Look, these sevens interacting. So those three squares there have got to be, what's that? Two, five, and eight. The five is fixed. Oh, five is fixed by this five. These two squares are two and eight, and we can do that as well. What a gorgeous puzzle, eh? Just really, really quality setting. That's got to be an eight by Sudoku now. So those squares are four and nine. 
I'm not sure if we can resolve them. I can't see how to. It fixes the nine there though. Those squares there have got to be four and six. Oh, bobbins, that's not resolvable either. Those two squares have got to be five. Ah, that is, oh dear. Hang on, what have I done wrong there? Not four and six, whoa. That was nearly a big shank. Um, what's going wrong with my scanning? Four and seven? Four and seven is better, that's resolvable and doesn't lead me to worry about what on earth I can put in this square. So this is now five and six, which is resolvable. Five and six there, that's got to include an eight and a four. I don't know the order. So those squares down there are two, six and six. Uh, I've done it again, haven't I? What have I done wrong here? Sixes have gone wrong. Why did I put a six in here? Because I needed a six. I've got fours repeating up here. This is just total and utter nonsense. Sorry guys, this is just appalling. Um, now, that eight is correct. I've just repeatedly misscanning this column. This is a six and a seven, which is a seven here and a six here. These two squares are four and five. I'm double checking that, that is correct. That's a five, that's a four. That fixes this as a four. This miss must be a five, six pair, which we can resolve. Six, seven, eight there is working. One, eight here, that square up there has got to be a six. Still don't know the, th so I must have used, yeah, I've used up all of the sandwich clues now for sure. I've used up most of the thermometer clues. That's got to be a four because of the three, five there. So that's a four, that's a three. That fixes the four and the nine. That's a nine now. These two squares are one and three, which is resolvable. These two squares are two and five. Whoops. That's a one and an eight. Those are four and eight. One of these squares is a two. Well, and it's on the thermometer, so everything gets disambiguated there. That's got to be a two. Looking down here, we still need to place six and eight, which we can now do, that's good. Four and seven, that's also good. That fixes the four and the eight. That should be a six. These two squares are seven and eight, and that's resolved. And these two squares are four and five. And I think after a couple of missteps there with whatever was going on with my brain, that is the finished solution. Loved it, loved it, Jesper. So thanks very much for sending that over to us. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, yeah, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.